Hey guys, it's SD again here. It's about 2.30 2 in the afternoon, the next day after holding these batteries. Uh, what I'm going to do is probably disconnect this and hook it to the second set and uh, charge them up this evening. Now, these batteries, before we pulsed them, they were at 12.85. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, first thing today, they're at... 13.23, 13.24. That's not too bad reaction just from the first time being pulsed. That's pretty darn good. So they must not be sulfated up too bad. Um, when you get batteries, they're not really sulfated up that much. When you go to discharge them with the headlights, you probably want to run them down to about uh, 12 volts and then stop your uh, discharge. And then go ahead and uh, uh, charge them back up, or hook them back up to your battery bank here, and then let them charge back up. Um, the ones that are really sulfated, really old batteries, a one-time shot, you can run them down to like uh, 11.90. I wouldn't go any lower than that. Some guys that I know have gone down to 11.80, and it's a uh, really difficult batteries that are really old four five six years old that haven't been maintained uh, I had one guy made a comment said did you have to uh, flush out the system uh, or the, some he said some particles or something are going to settle on the bottom of your batteries uh, that's conventional charging off a regular charger it'll actually burn chips off and they'll fall in the bottom this is called cold boiling and you're this pulse motor is putting uh, three, 300 plus volt spikes into the battery. The uh, sulfation built up on the plates actually turns back into a liquid state. And uh, basically the sulfuric acid starts to bond to the uh, plates on your battery. And when you hit them with these spikes, it'll free it up and it'll uh, uh, soak back up into the fluid and uh, then your electrolyte is back up to the level it's supposed to have been at. Uh, it's something you might have to do maybe once a year, twice a year, depends on what kind of use you're getting on your batteries. But I'll go ahead and uh, stop this video here and uh, get hooked up on the second set of batteries and uh, see what we're going to do from there. But that was pretty good reading. Just one, uh, one uh, time being pulsed. All the way up to 1323. That's pretty good for over 10 hours of being resting. That's not bad at all. Decent voltage. All right, guys. Well, let me get this hooked up and we'll start the second part of this video here. Okay, guys, this is SD back again. Now, what I'm going to do is show you one other thing that you can do. If you don't have a uh, headlight and you want to uh, try to uh, do this charging and uh, discharging following what's called a C20 rate. Uh, C20 rate is the natural safe way of what a, uh, a battery is supposed to be charged at and discharged at. Uh, if you go to the forum site that I was telling you about, look up, uh, it's in called the uh, Bible Battery. Uh, John Bendini and a few other people put that together. There's a lot of really good information and that information helps on restoring a lot of these old batteries. So what I've done is taken the uh, solid state pulse motor and I hooked it to the second set of uh, T145 batteries. Now those were used yesterday to charge these two batteries here up to 15.30 uh, and they ran all day for about six hours to let you know how much power this uses those two batteries are sitting at 12.76 right now so they were at 12.89 or 85 excuse me, yes, or 12.85 so I let you know how much little power this pulse motor uses and it's putting out 300 plus volts of spikes into the battery it's being conditioned all right, so now we've taken the covers off of these uh, batteries here now, and 
we're gonna go ahead and put the little napkins over them because when they start uh, bubbling you get a lot of the uh, mist all over the uh, battery areas caps and stuff like that and batteries have been known to do what they call belching and they'll actually spew up a little bit of the uh, liquid inside there so you never want to stand right over and look right down into them you want to have some sort of a face shield on if you can get that and get one cheap like at Harbor Freight or something like that just think of safety okay so now we're sitting at 12.76 uh, and what I've done is I've, I've adjusted this potentiometer down to the settings I used to have before on it just you know I have an amp meter in line but we want to discharge these two batteries at about uh, 10 amp uh, draw and putting 10 amps back into these two batteries but it won't really show up as amperage it's going to be showing up as spikes of 300 plus volts so let's go ahead and turn this back on you can watch the meter you'll also notice this uh, quail set you'll hear a slight hum okay just kind of listen for it when I turn it on you can hear that when you see the batteries you'll start watching them here and slowly start coming up So now what I'll do is just mess around the backyard. I've got uh, a quill jig i got to throw together to make a, a stator set for uh, Daryl over at Belgrade uh, Machine. His buddy of mine online made a really nice uh, wind generator and he sent it to me so I'm going to make a stator for him and hopefully get it sent out this payday. I'm really short on cash so <laughs> I'm doing what I can with what little bit i got around here. Anyway, uh, we'll let these charge up nice and slow up to like uh, 15 10 15 30 and then I'll back the pot pot off again and just have it uh, maintain that same uh, charge and uh, maintain the uh, voltage between 15 10 and 15 30 for an additional uh, two more hours then I'll let that setup rest now these are the two batteries that are running the setup they were charged yesterday and they started out at 1285 and you see what the voltage was. Right? I forget what it was on the meter. Was it like 1323? That's just from being pulsed one time. Okay? So now what I'm doing, you're supposed to discharge these following that C20 rate. So I've got the pot potentiometer set at what's real close to a 10 amp draw from one of how I used this before. If I had a meter in line, uh, we, we could set it uh, exactly at uh, a 10 amp draw and then uh, what, what you're doing while you're conditioning this other one you're discharging this following the same C20 rate so uh, instead of having to use a headlight you're using the, these other two batteries that you just charged up the other day discharging them down to the level that you want which will break down through the lower sulfation and you're charging up another set at the same time Okay, so you can double up and get a lot more usage out of these. Okay, so uh, we'll let this run for a bit. You already see it's at uh, 1293. And I could turn this potentiometer up and this thing would just peak up and make it charge really fast. But you don't want it to do that. You want a nice, slow, steady charge. See, like it's coming up. Probably hit 1295 here in just a bit. There it goes, just starting. These Trojan batteries and other batteries that I know of, they like a nice slow pulse. Just try to follow that C20 rate, and you guys can't go wrong. Okay, and then uh, one other video I'll do is I'll go up 
and uh, kind of go over this uh, solid state a little bit more. Uh, a few things for you guys if you want to uh, get some of the parts for this, like the uh, transistors are a, uh, a th I think it's a 3055 transistor. You can get them on eBay really cheap. Uh, Radio Shack, they're a couple of bucks, like two or three bucks a piece. Uh, the diodes, you want to use at least, these are the diodes right here, the little black things. You can use a 1N004, uh, but I like to use the heavier. These are uh, 5408 diodes, and you can get those through eBay also. Uh, on the side here, has a 33 ohm half watt resistor. You can get those at Radio Shack all the time. Uh, you can get uh, 100 ohm resistors. You don't have to use these great big ones, but I like to use them. And they're real stout. Um, this is a, uh, uh, I forget what it was, 10 watt. You'd have to look at the uh, thing. I don't have my glasses on. A 100, 100 ohm resistor. Some of those you can get at Radio Shack. Uh, a lot of times eBay. Uh, this potentiometer you can get on eBay. The ones that sell at uh, Radio Shack. Uh, they're okay these are the ones that I've been getting uh, last a lot longer and then just miscellaneous little connections and you have to have a solder gun uh, all the wire underneath I, I like to use uh, like number 10 wire that comes from each of these uh, setups right here uh, comes off this is a uh, your whole body of your uh, transistor is called the collector and then you have a base and an emitter okay and I like to use the uh, same lengths of wire coming from each one and then just hook them up so they'll all reach and that keeps your uh, resistance equal throughout each transistor so we'll go over little uh, tips later on on how to build one of these things and some do's and don'ts but for right now uh, we're up and charging the next bank and it's already up to 13.50 not too bad alright guys We'll catch you later.